Hey gang, we are in St. Joseph, Michigan today. It's a beautiful summer day, early in the morning, and I'm going to be telling you the story today. We're here today to talk about a flight, that a doomed flight that happened back in 1950 that was crossing the lake here and well, it disappeared. It was flight number 2501, Northwest Orient. They were departing New Jersey on that evening, and it was going to be a night flight. And they were headed this way. They knew there was uh, going to be some weather in the Midwest, and they were heading to Minneapolis to start, and they were going to change crews there and exchange some passengers and then head on with a fresh fresh crew to Spokane, Washington and Seattle, but they would never make it. Because right here, actually a little bit north of here, they made radio contact for the last time with the Benton Harbor Tower and they were reporting in. Now in those days, we didn't have radar, Doppler radar for weather. We did not have radar tracking planes for commercial. We weren't flying at high altitudes because we didn't really have pressurized aircraft for commercial yet. They were flying in a McDonnell Douglas DC-4. It's a four-engine plane, safe airplane. It has piston radial engines. I mean, four engines, a big plane. But there's no plane that can battle Mother Nature. And as they came here, as they approached this place, they were heading into a big squall line, thunderstorms. And we have some pretty, pretty big storms here on Lake Michigan and in the Chicago area. They were at 3,500 feet. They made that radio contact. They were actually near here, between here and South Haven. They were supposed to be 50 miles or more to the north at a place called Glen, Michigan, on a Victor Airway. We call those Victor Airways, those highways in the sky in the old days before GPS. The last reported, after that radio contact, the last reported sighting was someone did see the faintly out over the lake in the storm. They saw, they heard the sputtering of the engine and they, they saw a flash, which to me as a pilot, I've flown close to thunderstorms. I flew in a thunderstorm only once, and that's all I needed to do, and it wasn't in the middle of it, it was on the edge of one. And I thought the wings were gonna come off, almost went upside down. Now they requested 2,500 feet. They wanted to go lower, and the reason they wanted to go lower was I'm sure they were trying to maintain visibility. And unfortunately, they flew into that storm. Today we have pressurized, air, pressurized aircraft. We fly over the storms. Can you imagine what the scene in the cabin was? It's been unbelievable. Bouncing around. Well, they didn't find anything until the next day after the plane had disappeared. All they found was, just north of here, South Haven, 12 miles out, there was a debris field, and there were no survivors. There would be no survivors. In fact, there would be no bodies, if I would say full bodies. That plane must have hit the water at four or 500 miles an hour because there were just body parts that were washing up to the shore. One woman, I think it was her son and his friend, they were walking the beach here. I think it was in South Haven, but anyway, they found something really unusual. Like, what kind of animal is that? 
and they brought it home and mom put it in the fridge. Nobody could identify it. Finally, they called the police. The police came and the officer said to her when he saw it, he said, ma'am, that's a human lung. So the ship has not been found. They've been looking for it for many decades. Even Clive Cussler with an author here, I'll put the link on her book. They've been looking and they've had no luck. No luck at all. So I, someday someone will find the, the, the airplane, I'm sure, but we're gonna head to the cemetery right now and we're going to pay our respects. All right, we are en route to the Riverview Cemetery here in St. Joseph, Michigan. And we're going to be meeting one of our subscribers who actually suggested that we do this story. His name is Tom White. And he'll, he will be meeting us here and there is a grave we're going to be looking at. Also, I think there's a mass grave here also. So uh, let's see what let's see what we find here. And we are in. I'm going to keep the camera rolling to see if we can spot Tom. I'm not sure. Oh, I think I see his car way down there. Okay. Let's head this way. I think this is Tom's car here. Yes. All right, we've made it. Let's do this. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad. Good to see you. you Shake did. your hand. This is Tom White, Hello, who is everybody. one of our subscribers. And as I said, he was good enough to give us the suggestion to come here to tell this story of 2501. Mm -hmm. So I was just at the beach and I kind of, oh, you got the shirt on. All right, okay, everybody. <laughs> That's the merch. <laughs> got to give that a shout out That's right. but I gave kind of an introduction and we talked about the story yeah. and we understand I think there might be uh, a grave here uh, for that one gentleman and or his family and then we've got the um, there might be a mass grave here I don't know maybe yeah, just I mean, itself found in, in nothing bodies. here well yeah right. but they had put uh, body parts I think here, in a in a mass there, uh, yeah, so is that up in South Haven? South or Haven. Do you know where that grave is yes. of the man? Let's, yes. let's uh, lead us the way. I see there's a memorial sign here, which is nice. So this is John and Catherine, who went by Kay Hawkinson, I believe. And there is, a mo oh, there is the memorial, okay. Yeah, there's the memorial too. So those, those are all the names of all the people. Yep, 58 passengers, uh, 55 passengers, three crew. Yeah. Right here, is this a mass grave or is this just a memorial? I think there are... I think it's just body parts. Body parts, I mean, yeah, so it's... A few, and I don't think they know who they are. Right. Because I heard that there was some here found and then a lot up in South Haven. Yeah, yeah. So we're just going to be doing this location for today. So I see the crew, Robert Lind, Vern Wolf, and of course Bonnie was the, Bonnie Ann Feldman was the flight attendant. And I see the name John and Catherine on here. Hawkinson. And we do know a little bit about them. 
Deborah, who's one of our genealogists, mm -hmm. she was able to put a few things together. The whole family was basically wiped out. Janice was seven years old and Tommy was five years old. And they were going to be on that Minneapolis stop. Right. It was going to go on to Seattle, Spokane. And I think she was pregnant, as oh, I understand wow. it. Yeah. And she was going to, they were going to tell the family yep. the good news. That's just terrible. And what's sad about the story of that family getting wiped out is truly the family lineage was wiped out because the mother never remarried, although the father did. But there, I don't think there, she was the only wow. child. And I'm talking about the mother, right. Catherine. So it's, it's pretty sad that it kind of reminds me, I don't know if you saw the Eastland disaster mm -mm. that I did. It was a ship that went down in the Chicago River and there were a lot of families, a lot of families that were wiped out. A very sad story. Anything you, you've probably seen this for years, I'll bet. You know, I came up here in 88, so I've been up here, what, 33 years. Uh huh. And uh, it, it was probably around the 10th year I'd ever read about it. I think they were doing kind of a memorial here one day. Right. And I read it in the local newspaper. Okay. And that's about as far as it's gotten. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's we uh, it a couple of times. You know. So there's a woman who wrote a book, and I'm going to put the link in the description box. Oh, good. I'm going to hold, uh, hold, could you hold that for a second for me? I'm going to ask Tom to be my cameraman. Yeah, and I wanted to tell you guys, look at that. This is, gr <laughs> I love this. this. I love being on this You're side of the camera. You're going to do more of this. This thing's heavy, isn't it? <laughs> it is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you can use two hands. But Clive Cussler, if you, uh, many of you know Clive Cussler, mm -hmm. very famous author, author, diver, adventurer. He found the, the Hunley. He's... I don't have to talk about him, but he was partners with author Valerie Van Heest. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but she was teamed with Clive. And they've been working a long time. They had the debris field, they had other clues that they found, and they basically did a lot of side scan sonar, which oh, is wow. like, I've done a lot of that in the Arctic looking for the Sir John Franklin expedition ships, and it's like mowing the lawn. It's very tedious very hard it's a sonar it looks like a torpedo it's underwater near the bottom and you've got wow. to drag it and you really need to know where the ship right in this case the airplane we call airplane us pilots we call <laughs> airplanes the ship right and you really need to know pretty pretty not precisely but about mm -hmm. where it is because you, you can't like do the sonar searching over wide vast oh, no. swaths of, of, of water so they haven't found it yet, but they are, they are continuing to look. And in the process, they found a whole bunch of other ships. And there's, there's all kinds of stories. But she wrote a book called Fatal Crossing, mm -hmm. and I'll put the link in the description box. So yeah, hopefully they find the airplane someday. But I think the way she put it in the conclusion was, which was quite poignant, is that there's, uh, there's nothing really to find anymore. Right. They, they, with all the, the testimony from the families and the, the research that they did, they pretty much know all the facts that you'd right. want to know about it. But I'm sure someday they'll, they'll, they'll right. find it. So, yeah, they did uh, an extensive search uh, yeah. many years ago. Yeah. And it, I think it's just so fast and it's really deep there. Oh, yeah. It it's probably a couple hundred feet, yeah. huh? 12 yeah. miles out. Yeah, God, that's probably around 500. I mean, yeah, now the good channel is 645. So. Yeah, is it? Yeah, that 645 feet yeah. deep. And is that up near Mackinac or? That's when you say you know, that a you, lot of it's probably out right out here. Yeah, way out there. Now I've sure. flown over this lake several times in my caravan and never at night. <laughs> <laughs> and I had floats under me, and I actually would not fly over this lake if I had big waves, because right. if you turn over, I mean, this lake is like, it's worse than the ocean, the way the waves work and all of that, the rhythm of the waves and the, the height of the waves. So, but anyway, thanks for, sure. thanks for pointing this out for us. It's, My pleasure. you've been talking to me about this since <laughs> last year. I said, when I come to Michigan, we will definitely do it. And I'm so glad we did. It was, it's, it's a sad, but, 
remarkable story that hopefully we can hopefully they can find that so go, go get that book guys and hopefully uh well all you can say is god rest their souls and uh rest in peace Thank you.